Hey everybody, Jake Reichbart here. Today I'm going to share with you a lengthy lesson excerpt. So have your guitars ready and we're going to have some fun together arranging a song. Perhaps you've seen some of my many hundreds of solo guitar arrangements I have here on YouTube and the inspiration for these arrangements is right here behind me as you can see. I grew up with this with these vinyls and uh, I draw pretty much from any kind of style imaginable from the pop music of the past hundred years. Everything from Glenn Miller to Van Halen, Alan Holsworth to Motown, and pretty much anything in between. Beatles, I have perhaps uh, 25 Beatles song arrangements, 20 Steely Dan song arrangements, same for uh, Stevie Wonder, rock, hard rock, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and of course tons and tons of classic jazz standards from the 40s and 50s, bebop, dance tunes, movie themes. And if you want to learn how to arrange any of these songs for solo guitar, I can teach you. Just like the excerpt that you're about to watch, which comes from a lesson that runs about 90 minutes, I have nearly 200 additional titles and they are mostly song specific. I enjoy teaching through specific songs because I can show you hands-on how I approach arranging a song. What's nice about these lessons is that I don't just tell you do this and you're done, but rather I'll take you through three or four or five different ways to play the same passage. I'll work with you on dynamics, on articulation, and a hundred other things that you cannot just put to paper. As I mentioned, these lessons run approximately 90 minutes. The introduction, which runs usually 15 minutes, focuses on the right hand and rhythm. And in this introduction, I go through my three pillars of rhythmic arranging. The first principle being melody and bass only. The second being rhythmic arpeggiation. And the third, of course, the down stroke that I play with my right hand fingernails to produce that backbeat that everybody asks me about. Nevertheless, I do have two main method lessons. The first one, how to arrange any song for solo guitar running two hours, and also an introduction to fingerstyle guitar and solo guitar arranging running two hours and 40 minutes. The information about these lessons, the cost, my full lesson list, as well as a link to the full performance of the song that we're working on today is below in the information. So expand the information, take a look, and let's get started. As I already mentioned, a lot of this tune is spent cruising through a lot of one, six, two, five type progressions. And for the first movement, those chords are going to be F, D minor, G minor, and C7. And it's worth maybe lining up ahead of time the basic positions that we're going to be in. So for the F, I have two positions that I use. The first is the first position. And I have a bar across all the strings on the first fret. I have F at the bottom. I have F at the top. And in between those, I, as I kind of mentioned already, I have two, uh, three, mel three chord notes that I can use. Excuse me. These three notes that on themselves look like an A minor chord, which it is, but in the context of F, of course, it's the chord notes of F major seven. So those notes are the E on the fourth string, second fret, and the A the third string second fret and the C that's already under the first finger bar put together F E A C and F my D minor chord sometimes is no more than three notes the D on the fifth string fifth fret with my typically with my second finger like I said I could also do it this way or some other ways but typically this is what I'll do the pinky gets the F melody note on the second string notice I moved the F here because the circumstance of the bass note dictated that and that's on the second string sixth fret and also a chord note on the third string fifth fret that is a C which is the seventh of the chord so just three notes are enough, but I could, my first finger is already here, I could throw in this F as well. Not necessary, doesn't take anything, doesn't change anything much. Gives me another option. There's also this. The only thing with this is, when this is maybe a chord shape that is more familiar to you, it's a bar on the fifth fret, D, A, C, and F. 
that it requires a jump back to this position. And the reason I ended up with this, because there's nothing hardly to do. It's, I'm already in position to play the next chord, which is a G minor seven. So, and what's more, we talked about sustaining uh, melody notes. This note, the F melody, can sustain or remain in place between the D chord and the G minor chord. So, next, moving next, and the third fret. So, G, F, B flat, D, and G are the notes under the bar, but of course, out of those I pick out the relevant melody notes. So at this exact moment I may have G, F, B flat, and once again F. And moving on to the C, couldn't be simpler really, I don't hardly change anything, I just change the bass note from the G to the C, because the melody remains F, well there's a little movement, we'll get to the melody in a second, I'm just lining up the chord shapes, but setting aside this E note momentarily, there is a C chord with F in the melody, making it a an eleventh or a suspension. If this is my seventh, and there's my chord right there, there's hardly any fingering difference between the G minor and the C chord. It is the bass note moving from here to here that kind of gives you the helps clarify the quality of the chord. G minor seven, C seven with, of course, that fourth in the melody. And the next, next melody note, the G is right there as well, which leads me to the next uh, position of F. The first one was this. The next one has the F on the fourth string, uh, third fret, because, because you have this kind of thing where G minor, C7, and F. It's just the root notes of these three chords, the two, five, and one, are all in the same fret. So that's, that's why it looks, I get the often the comment, it looks so easy. Well, you make it easy by finding, <laughs> finding easy things, and it's really easy to move from one chord, these three chords from one to another just by not doing anything. G minor 7, C7, and F. There it is, right there. I didn't do anything with my left hand. What I did do is change the melody. That, that's the lesson right there. This demonstration that I just gave is worth the money of the whole lesson. Playing that melody right now expressed the entire chord progression, G minor, C7, F major 7, and I did so only by playing the melody and only with bass notes moving from here to here to here. So I demonstrated two major principles, or maybe even more than that. One was the idea of just playing the melody note with a bass note, and almost with nothing else, You sometimes the chord progression or what you're playing the melody with a bass tells you the whole story without needing anything else. And if you needed something else, well, you have a couple extra notes in there. And then the idea of simplicity and not moving much with the left hand when you have the, the ability to do so. So uh, that little section right there kind of is, is a microcosm, I guess, for the whole arrangement and maybe my entire approach of uh, solo guitar arranging. So, back to this position. So, uh, we actually didn't elaborate. So, this F position, we had this one, and then this one simply has the F now on the fourth string, third fret. And you can pick out uh, notes for the chord F by playing also the C on the third string, fifth fret, and of course this A on top, which is a melody note anyway. If, 
If you did nothing else, just finger these three notes, that's fine. If you laid this finger down, you'd have also have this D, which is a kind of a sixth. I don't know if you want that or not. It come in, can come in handy, or you can avoid it, or you can just play like this, cover these three notes. So you have the E, which also gives you the major seven, if you want that sound, or maybe you can save it for later. Maybe play simple at first, and later in the tune, next time around, or second or third time, you can make it into a major seven. So this repeats, this progression repeats twice because we're doing So we had the 1625 twice before we go in here. So but what we have not done yet is actually line up the melody notes. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put it all together now. 